Hello everyone, this is Jirax Japan. I have been explaining the history of ninjas and samurai so far, but do you know what the image of the Japanese emperor was in history? In this video, I will talk about the legendary emperor of the Warring States period who died with many mysteries still unsolved. So I introduce this story powerfully today with a fast pace, so Chirak and let's go. This is about the Kamakura period. The Kamakura period is set 150 years from 1185 to 1333. This is the era when the first samurai or bushi led government. The Kamakura shogunate was born under the leadership of Minamoto no Yoritomo, and the samurai or bushi first began to conquer the Japan world. I'll say it again, during this era, samurai warriors and shoguns governed Japan and held real power, not an emperor. The subject of this video, the Emperor Gotoba was born in 1180 in an era of such fierce battle ages. Emperors were originally regarded as symbolic figures of Japan and held the highest and most prestigious positions. But things were different in this era. It can be said that the Emperor had a very difficult time. In this video, I introduce the Emperor Gotoba who left behind such meaningful cursed words before his death like. Emperor Gotoba said, If by any chance my thoughts of this world turn into a demon, it will bring calamity upon this world. And if my descendants were to regain control of the world, it would all be due to my power. After leaving behind these words, a series of unfortunate events occurred. But why did Emperor Gotoba leave behind such words? Let me explain the historical background first. In this era, the two powerful factions of the Genji and Heike clans often competed and battled with each other, and finally Genji team won at their battle. And at this time, three sacred treasures sunk in the sea. Japanese called Sanshu no Jingi, which was being thought as the symbol of the emperor. The reason why is that Antoku Emperor was sunk in the sea by some incident with these emperor's treasures. So when Gotoba Emperor knew this, he so few disappointed. Japan was divided into a dual administration system with the shogunate or bakufu in eastern Japan and the imperial court in western Japan. In the imperial court, resentment against the emerging bakufu grew stronger. The reason for his grudge is that the variable source of taxes, is called the shōen, was taken by the shogunate of bakufu. Shōen means like a public land for collecting taxes from the official government such as an emperor. At the timing when the main samurai of the Genji clan, Minamoto no Yoritomo, was unexpectedly assassinated, Emperor Gotoba thought this was the chance to challenge and conquer the shogunate Japanese called Bakufu to regain sovereignty. Emperor Gotoba declared war on the shogunate and sent a notice to the eastern shogunate. Upon hearing this notice, the samurai in the east were suddenly shaken by the fact that it came from the official court such as an emperor. But there was someone on the shogunate's side who prevented it. That person was like a woman shogunate, Hojo Masako, the wife of the assassinated Minamoto no Yoritomo. Masako, despite being a woman, convinced the samurai to fight against the court with these words. There is no comparison between the lives of the samurai now and before, since Yoritomo defeated the enemies of the court and established the Kamakura shogunate. You must not forget the debt of gratitude that is higher than the mountains and deeper than the seas. If you still choose to side with the court like an emperor, then kill me before you go. By her speech, the morale of the Kamakura shogunate was at its highest, so motivated to fight for the court. I feel this looks like a legend speech from Mona Luther King's speech like, I have a dream? What do you guys think anyway? In the Jokyu era, 1221, Emperor Gotoba raised the army to suppress the Kamakura shogunate's regent. Hojo Yoshitoki, this Jokyu war, was the first armed conflict in which the imperial court sought to regain power and resist the emerging military society. 
but the side of the Emperor Gotoba was relaxed and the soldiers gathered from the western provinces lacked morale. It is said that the Emperor Gotoba had little actual combat experience and lacked practical experience in battle and was a one-man type of a person. He seemed to have underestimated the samurai of the shogunate due to his arrogance as an official emperor. Although Emperor Gotoba personally armed himself and commanded his troops, they were unable to break through the final defense line at the Uji River in Kyoto from the Bakufu invasion. And the shogunate's army for Bakufu side, with a force of 190,000 soldiers, was too large to defeat. Gotoba's side was just 17,500. Gotoba Emperor was outnumbered and had no chance of winning. And also the Shogunate side had a team mentality where each member trusted and relied on each other, meeting face to face about tactics and building trust, working together as a team, yeah, the Bakufu is like a professional samurai, so strong. Feeling an overwhelming difference in power, the Imperial Court under the Emperor Gotoba planned to surrender because the shogunate was too strong. They sent a letter to the shogunate saying that the war was started by Gotoba's subordinates without permission. And so this was Gotoba's subordinate responsibility, not Gotoba. Oh my god, what a word to escape responsibility. Can you guys believe Gotoba? As a leader, the Emperor Gotoba is unfit. And finally, the Gotoba Emperor was arrested and related all the court nobles were executed. And after losing this battle, the Imperial Court lost their military power totally. It was said that the authority of the Emperor had declined. In other words, the Age of Samurai and the Sengoku Age was started. After this, even the remarkable Emperor Gotoba had no choice but to accept banishment. Japanese called Shimanagashi to the remote island of Oki. As a result, the Oki Islands are a group of islands located approximately 50 kilometers north of the Shimane Peninsula. Anyways, this war was called the historical event of Japan because the samurai gained enough power to surpass the imperial court. And after this event, samurai or bushi conquering era kept going on 650 years can you believe it? So anyway, why did Emperor Gotoba come to curse people? Originally, Emperor Gotoba had a grand ambition to overthrow the Kamakura Shogunate and become the ruler of Japan. Even when he was exiled in Oki Island, he showed a strong and defiant attitude, declaring himself the defender of the new Oki Island. However, as he realized he couldn't return to his main homeland Kyoto, he gradually became disheartened and his deep sadness eventually turned into a great resentment. His emotion was like this, I pray for the day when I can return to the capital, Kyoto, and restore my honor, until then I will endure. What happened as a result of Emperor Gotoba's vengeful spirit? After the death of Emperor Gotoba, there were events that were believed to be a curse. After losing for Jokyu battle for Emperor's side, the Bakufu was victorious in battles and achieved the actual control of the samurai-led government. However, the Hojo family feared the grudge of Emperor Gotoba, who had opposed Hojo Bakufu, because various strange phenomena were said to have occurred. Around the time of Emperor Gotoba's death in 1239, there were consecutive years of bad harvests such as famine due to the cold climate, losses due to flooding in Kamakura and celestial disturbances in Kyoto in 1239, followed by strange occurrences in Kamakura in 1240, and almost every year there were disasters. After the Emperor Gotoba died in exile on the Oki Islands in 1239, one of the powerful samurai, Miura no Yoshimura, who had attacked by Kyoto during the Joki War, died in 1239. The following year, Hojo Tokifusa, one of the generals, 
died while the other general, Hojo Yasutoki, suffered from a high fever and died in 1242. Oh my god, is this the Gotoba curse? How was the vengeful spirit exorcised? Performing a purification ritual. At this point, the imperial court and the shogunate launched a full scale effort to appease the vengeful spirit of Emperor Gotoba. First, they changed his posthumous name from Kentoku In to Gotoba In, as the character Toku was believed to easily become a grudge. Then, a mausoleum was built on the site of Gotoba In's former palace. Which later became the current Mizunose Shrine. Additionally, the shogunate built a new shrine called Shinwakamiya at the Tsuruwakama Hachimangu Shrine. As a result of this effort, the Emperor line was eventually restored to the direct descendants of Emperor Gotoba. Finally, I would like to introduce the remote island punishment, in other words, banishment that Emperor Gotoba received. So please stay tuned to the end. That's the Japanese called Shima Nagashi. Exile to an island. Now let me introduce the system in Japan that is similar to the prison system where the Emperor Gotoba fell victim to, island exile. If we compare it to something in the United States, it would be like a Alcatraz Island. The people who was targeted as a punishment. Those who were subject to the punishment of island exile were, for example, those who caught fish other than fishermen, those who captured ducks with a blowpipe, those who possessed firearms, those who organized gambling, those who killed their opponent in a fight, those who injured others in an accident, and so on. Even during the Edo period, the society was so strict that even a small crime could result in island exile punishment. As for Emperor Gotoba, he was defeated in a power struggle and was punished with island exile. Even though he was the emperor, adultery and the theft were also included in the crimes punished with island exile. There were even cases where one person committed a crime and all related parties were punished with island exile. And why banishment? So why was island exile the mainstream punishment rather than the death penalty? It is said that the, this is because in Japan, where Buddhism was widely spread, the idea that taking the life of a living being was despicable became mainstream, and the concept of island exile was born. It is said that the idea of not being able to achieve enlightenment if the soul cannot separate well from the body is the reason why beheading or committing harakiri were not used as the punishment. Location of banishment. As for the specific location of the islands where people were exiled, if a crime was committed in the Edo area, which is now the Tokyo area in eastern Japan, the criminal was exiled to the Izu Islands, limited to three locations Miyake Island, Hachijo Island, and Nijima Island. As for Western Japan, Kyoto and Osaka would have been exiled to places such as Oki or Iki Island and the Amakusa Islands. Procedure of Banishment Once someone was sentenced to island exile, this was the fate they had to follow. Exile to remote island was an indefinite punishment. The destination of the exiles was determined on the eve of departure. The convicts spent their time in prison, feeling mentally restless until they were informed of their destination. His emotion was like this, why did I have to suffer such a fate? Is this the price I have to pay for my ambitions? The sound of the waves and the rustling of the trees are the only things that keep me company. I feel so alone. The exile ship was dispatched three times in spring, summer, and autumn. It took more than 70 days to reach the island, independent on the distance. Some people were tied up with ropes and suffered in the ship, and there were also cases of infectious diseases occurring on board, which could lead to a cluster. According to one story, about half the 300 convicts survived and arrived safely on the island. 
the further the island they are more severe the crime. In the sea currents became rough. In the days without GPS, some ships that sank were never found. As a result, many convicts died from being unable to withstand the stressful environment. The Banishment Life Now from the time of arrival on the island, there were a series of tragic events. After arriving on the island, there was a system called village division to decide which village on the island the convicts would enter. Those with higher status were given good rooms, while those with lower status had to stay in small and poor rooms. The basic principle on the island was self-sufficiency, and the Japanese government had a policy of living on its own. As a result, the convicts helped with the fishing and the agriculture of the islanders. Banishment Trouble Famines occurred on the island and water shortages were common. Many convicts could not bear hunger and ate anything they could, including poisonous substances which led to many deaths. In addition, if they could not maintain good health on the island, it meant death. Basically, convicts exiled to the island spent their lives alone. His emotion was like this. I can't stand this anymore. The food is scarce. The weather is harsh and the future is bleak. Further crime. There were also rules that prohibited marriage or couples living together on the island. In such a stressful life, some convicts committed further crimes. For example, they would play with one woman on the island or abandon their children born out of wedlock by drowning them in the sea. Many tragedies occurred. However, convicts who committed further crimes due to stress were subjected to harsh treatment, such as being lynched by islanders or being put in the island's prison. History of Banishment There are various theories about the history of exile to a remote island. It has already existed since the middle of the Kofun period. It was properly legalized as a punishment during the Nara period. During the Kamakura period, mainly emperors and samurai were exiled. In the Meiji period, the system of exile to a remote island ended, and instead, Convicts were sent to the undeveloped land of Hokkaido for forced labor. Thank you very much for watching. In order to add momentum to this video, I tried to explain it quickly and powerfully this time. Did you understand it? Personally, I still have a question that remains unanswered. Why did Emperor Gotoba stop the Joki War halfway through? Even though he knew he would suffer a crushing defeat in the Joki War by betraying his own subordinates, if it was so easy to betray people in those days, it's really surprising, isn't it? Anyways, thank you again for watching this video. If there is anything you didn't understand in the video, if there is something you would like me to cover in a future video, please feel free to leave a comment. Cheers!